Okay. So we are looking at a uh, beginning. We look at the Gauss elimination method. You can solve any kind of a uh, linear system where the matrix A no uh, restriction at all. Like the uh, inverse matrix method is exact method, but provided uh, the solution is a uh, unique, uh, not unique. The the inverse matrix A exists. Uh, then you can use the inverse matrix method. Gauss elimina elimination method, no restriction. Thomas algorithm must be three diagonal matrix. Then Gauss say the iterative method. Okay. The matrix A must be uh, what we call diagonally dominant. Not necessarily three diagonal, but if three diagonal, but if it is diagonally dominant, then you can uh, solve it using Gauss say the iterative method. What do we mean? Okay, let's say we take the case of okay, linear, linear system of three equation, three equations here. Diagonally dominant means okay, the mod okay, is written here. Modulus a i i must be greater than summation of modulus a i j. Okay, for i equal to one two three until n, where j from one to n, but j cannot be equal to i. Okay, for example, uh, you must check A11. Okay, let me write something. I mean, you have here, you check diagonal value A11. So, in what A11 must be greater than, okay, I cannot be equal to J. So, I mean, A12. Add up A13. In this case, you got 3, okay, 3 by 3 system only. So A11 must be greater than, modulus A11 must be greater than summation, uh, modulus of A12 at of modulus A13. Then the absolute value of A22 must be greater than absolute value of okay, the other two value, which is A21 at up modulus A23. Okay, when you look at A33, Okay, the absolute value of A33 must be greater than absolute value of A31 with add up with A32. If this condition is satisfied, then we said metric A is diagonally dominant. Okay, if A is diagonally dominant, then you can solve it using gauss seder iterative method. If it is not diagonally dominant, if you solve it, the solution won't converge. Won't converge like you solve the nonlinear system using the uh, fixed point iterative method. If you get the not the correct formula, okay, the solution will diverge. Mean bigger and bigger, or sometimes you get a not a uh, not number. Mean you may have okay the uh, square root of negative number or a division by zero there. Okay, and if the metric a is diagonally dominant, then okay, uh, you can come up with the formula. You want to we want to solve x1, x2, x3. If let's say this is diagonally dominant, then you want to solve for x1, right? Okay. X1 you take up from the first equation. So x1 will be b1 minus a12 x2 minus a13 x3 divided by a11 like you do the fixed point okay, iteration method left hand side make it become um, let's say we, they use this they use k so x2 at step k where the k start from 0 k is an iterative number k start from 0 so mean x2 at uh, initial value x2 at okay, at initial value we all use k okay, 0 x3 uh, at step k 0 also 0 so with the x2 at initial value x3 at initial value we can get better approximation for x1 so this is will be k plus 1 okay k plus 1 so after you obtain the x1 formula then x2 now you get the solve x2 from the second equation so x2 the other term will bring to uh, left, right hand side so b2 so this term bring to left hand side minus a21 x1 
this term bring to left hand side and uh, right hand side minus a23 x3 so divide by coefficient of x2 which is a22 okay gauss seder iterative methods here um, as, um x1 sin x1 you have the new x1 x1 here we take k plus one take the new one okay if fixed point iterative method that you solve the uh, newton's nonlinear system nonlinear system we still takes the old one but here gauss seder we take the new one if you take the old one that method uh, is called as jacobian jacobian method so x3 we still have the o only so x3 is k so with the old x3 new x1 you can obtain the new x2 so new one is k plus one okay after you obtain so x1 k plus one is the new x2 k plus one is the new you plug in into the third equation third equation then you can solve for your x number three will be b3 so the first and second term bring to left hand uh, right hand side so minus a31 x1 minus a32 x2 divide by coefficient of x3 which is a33 sin x1 you have the new one so you take the k plus one x2 have a new one take the k plus one with the new x1 new x2 you can obtain the new x3 which you denote as k plus one so with the initial value x1 is 0 x2 is 0 x3 is 0 so mean initially you put x2 0 x3 0 you obtain the new x1 okay the new x1 you put it here x3 still takes 0 you can calculate the new x2 with the new x1 and new x2 you can calculate the new x3 so mean your okay you have the k here let's see your table you got uh, 3 by 3 yeah so 3 column this is a x1 x2 x3 x number three so initially all value are zero so we okay x2 zero x3 zero you get the x1 at step number one okay to get x2 at step number one you will take okay, x1 number one x3 okay uh, at the old one still zero and then to calculate the new x3, you take the new x1, new x2, you get x number 3. So the process is repeated until the maximum of the, okay, this is a vector, uh, so be vector, vector, bow, the vector xk plus 1 minus xk less than epsilon. Mean the, all the value of the, okay, vector mean you take, okay, let's say row 1, you deduct row 0, all these three value. Okay, the absolute value must be less than epsilon. Okay, if we fix, let's say, four decimal place, epsilon will take 0 0.0005. Then you can stop. Once you stop, your solution is x. The last solution is actually xk plus 1. Okay, so this is a general idea of the Gauss, okay? say the iterative method. Formula is already done. Where wrote? Okay, example one. Okay, show that metric A is diagonally dominant. Yeah, we haven't solved it. Okay, show that metric A is diagonally dominant. So take the diagonal value. Okay, magnitude uh, modulus A11. You get six, and then you see, yeah, this is six is greater than modulus a one. Uh, first row, second column, plus a one three, cause six a one two. The modulus value you okay modulus negative one plus modulus two means six greater than one plus two, six greater than 3 which is true okay for okay a11 is proof then you find you check a22 modulus a22 you get 3 is it greater than modulus a1 
uh, a to one add up with modulus a to three okay modulus a to one okay take uh, the magnitude magnitude is one plus one three greater than one which is true this is this one is true okay you check magnitude a three three a three t is it greater than uh, is it greater than magnitude a three one magnitude a three two okay a three three the magnitude you have a okay a is it greater than a three one which is two okay magnitude a three two which is five okay a greater than seven is true okay therefore a is diagonally dominant. So okay, A is diagonally dominant. Then you can solve this metric A using gauss seder iterative method. Okay, of course, you can also solve it using Gauss elimination method. But can you solve it using Thomas algorithm method? Can we solve it using Thomas algorithm? Nimco? Are you around? Uh, yeah, you cannot because Thomas, you must be, this entry must be zero. If this one, let's say zero, this one zero, uh, three diagonal, then you can solve it using okay, uh, Thomas algorithm. Okay, and then uh, second example show that metric A is not diagonally dominant. So mean roughly C. Yeah. So again, you so repeat. You have to check A one one magnitude A one one is it greater than magnitude A one two plus magnitude A one three. Okay, A11 is 6. 6 is it greater than magnitude A12? You take magnitude, this will be 1. Magnitude 2 is 2. 6 greater than 3 is correct. Okay, we check. Is it A22? Magnitude A22 greater than magnitude A21 plus magnitude A23. Okay, magnitude A22, you take it become 2. Magnitude A21, this is 1. Magnitude A23 is 1. Okay, this uh false. Because 2 not greater than 2. Okay, if you got 1 not satisfied, therefore, no need to check number 3. Lah. If 1 is uh, invalid, then A is not diagonally dominant. Because okay, uh, this one fail. The third one is actually set, uh, also fail. Because you see, yeah, the third one also fail. A33, is it greater than A31 plus magnitude A32? A33, the magnitude is 8. A31, the magnitude is 4. A32 is 5. Okay, X greater than 9 is false. Actually, if number two fail, uh, then automatically A is not diagonally dominant, but condition three also fail. So, metric A is not diagonally dominant. If we solve it using gauss the iterative method, you wouldn't get the converged solution, meaning you cannot get the answer. But it's always guaranteed you can get the answer from okay, Gauss elimination method. You can try to plug in uh, into the template that you built okay, just now. Uh, you just change the metric A, oh, but here vector B is not given. So you, uh, uh, if given any vector B, then you can plug it back into the template that you have built just now. You can automatically obtain the solution. Okay. And then the third example, they ask you to rearrange the equation so that metric A here is will become diagonally dominant. Okay, 
because initially you will see here initial arrangement when you check a11 okay is it greater than a12 and up with magnitude a13 so a1 magnitude a11 you have one magnitude a12 you have five magnitude a13 you have two so one uh not greater than seven so this is false Okay, and you check A22, is it greater than magnitude A21 plus magnitude A23? Okay, A22, the magnitude you take out become 2, take the magnitude. Magnitude A1, uh, A21 is 1, A23 is A2, not greater than 9, this is also false. Okay. And then when you check it, okay, A33, is it greater than A31 plus A32? A33, the magnitude we have 2. 2, is it greater than A31 is 4? A32 is 1. Also false. This one also false. Huh? Okay, so how to arrange it so that it becomes diagonally dominant? Okay, you observe the last row. Okay, compare 4, 1, 2. 4 is the biggest, right? And then 4 greater than 1 plus 2. So this will become row 1. 4, 1, 2. Okay, if you put it now, this value. Chain other color cannot. Okay, if I make it the third row become first row four one two. Now my a one one magnitude a one is four, a one two this is one, a one three this is uh, also two. So four greater than three now become true. First row satisfied. Okay, second row we notice it was five. Okay. With first row, if you change it to second row, because here you put one, five, two. So your A22 two, two, will become five. A21 become one. Okay. Yeah. This one become row two. So your A22 two, two is five. A21 two, is one. A23 two, is two. So five greater than three now is true. So, okay, the second row will become third row. So, 1, negative 2, 8. So, now, 8, 3, 3 is 8. 8, 3, 1 is 1. 8, 3, 2 is actually, uh, magnitude is 2. So, 8 greater than 3 is true. Hmm. So, now, this is diagonally dominant. So, okay, so far, is it okay? So I mean you check again your A11 greater than A12 plus A13 after you swap row, swapping row. Because A11 now 4, A12 is 1, A13 is 2, which is true. Okay. Secondly, okay, if you take first row becomes second row, A22 greater than a21 plus magnitude A23. A22, magnitude is 5. Okay, this is 1 plus 2, which is true. Number 3, magnitude A33 greater than magnitude A31 plus magnitude A32. A33, magnitude is 8. Okay, magnitude A31 is 1, magnitude A32 is 2. So 8 greater than 3, which is true. So initially, it's not diagonally dominant. But after we swapping row, it becomes diagonally dominant. Because okay, your linear system is actually, for example, you have, let's say, this is 1, 5, 2. Huh? Let's say it's x plus 5y plus 2 uh, xyz. Let's say I put it 
equal to 1. This is uh, 1x minus 2y plus 8z. Let's say this is 2, 4, 1, 2. Let's say 4x uh, plus y plus 2z, let's say equal to 5. Okay, this is three equation. Not that we can, uh, this one, row one, row two, row three, we can swap it. Their sequence is not, uh, uh, wouldn't, I mean, if you swap it, this one become equation one. Uh, this three, this number two. It will be same if you put it to here. But if you put like this original system here, you cannot, it is not diagonally dominant, then you cannot solve it using gauss seder iterative method. It, the solution won't converge. Okay, but after you swap row, it be, uh, become diagonally dominant, then you solve it using gauss seder iterative method, you will get the converged solution. Okay. So now, it asks you to solve by gauss seder iterative method. Okay, before you solve it, make sure you make sure they are diagonally dominant. So this one is it diagonally dominant? You see this one? Two. Here if we modulus it eight plus one is nine. So initially this is not diagonally dominant. Eh? Initially this is not diagonally dominant unless this one you Put it is row two. Uh, this one you put as row three. This is row one. Initially, the metric A is not diagonally dominant, but after you keep chaining the row, uh, swapping the row, or you rearrange it, the last row make it become row one. First row make it become second row. Third, uh, the second row make it become third row. Now this is diagonally dominant. Uh, uh, After you, okay, initially you can check this not diagonally dominant. After that, this become diagonally dominant because magnitude A11 now is greater than magnitude A12 and up with magnitude A13. A11 now is 5. Okay, this one you take magnitude will be 1. The magnitude here is 1. 5 greater than 2, which is true. Okay, the second row, A22. Is it greater than A21 plus A23? A22, now the new one is 8. Is it greater than A21? The magnitude is 2. Okay, A23, take out magnitude is positive so 1 8 greater than 3 which is true and then a 3 3 is it greater than a 3 1 plus a 3 2 a 3 3 is 7 is it greater magnitude a 3 1 is 1 magnitude a 3 2 is 1 7 greater than 2 which is true mean after you re uh, uh, swapping row this okay the metric a become diagonally dominant then you can solve it using gauss seder iterative method. So from here, you write, okay, if A is diagonally dominant, then you can write down the iterative formula. You want to solve, okay, from first row, you solve it for X, okay, X number one. So you see X1, K plus one, X2, K plus one, X3, K plus one. So here, 11, mean you have actually 5, x1 minus x2 plus x3 equal to 11. So 11 add up with x2 minus with x3 divide by coefficient of x1 which is 5. So k actually start from 0, 1, 2. So initially k0, so if x2 at step 0, x3 at step 0, you can find x1 number 1. And then from second equation, second equation which read 2 x1 plus 8 x2 plus x3 equal to 17. Then you want to solve for x2, it will be 17 minus 2x1 minus x3 divided by 8. 
So x1, we have a new one. If we use a new one, x3 is still the old value. Then we obtain the new x2. Okay, lastly, from the last equation, you have negative x1 plus x2 plus 7x3 equal to 21. Solve for x3. So you divide by 7. So x3 is 21. So plus x1 minus x2. x1, x2, you got the new one. Then put up the new value. If if you okay, if the x2 here, x1 you take the O, this one you take the O, this one take the O, that method is so called as Jacobian method. Jacobian method will take longer time to converge compared to Gauss Seder iteration methods. Because it takes the old one, so it takes longer iteration. Okay, this is uh if you want to calculate using calculator. But uh using Microsoft Excel will be faster than your calculator. Okay, then we end here, we move to uh, keep it. we move to Microsoft Excel. We copy the equations, uh, this one. Put it here. Okay. Okay, then we use up uh, oh, the formula control C so that you can. This is your x1. Control C, this is a x number 2. This is x number 3. Okay, so what you need to do. This is k. You got uh, this is three uh, three. You got x one, x two, x three. Okay, and then um, k start from zero. X one zero at step k zero. I mean initial value or take zero. Okay, k one. When k equal to one. You want to calculate here when uh, k1 mean you you want to x1 at number one, so k you put in zero, right? When you plug in k here zero, zero plus one you get x1 at step number one. So this is okay. Take zero, take the zero. Okay, and then in Excel numerator you have three term. Make sure bracket. Divide backslash five. Okay, um, to make it flexible, so that next time you chain your, uh, chain the A and B, the solution is automatic calculate. You can divide by coefficient of here. Uh, then I need to key in, and I will make it more general. So five, negative one, one, eleven, seventeen, twenty one, negative one, seven, this is eight, this is one, five, two. Okay, I will make it general so that next time you change the A and B in here, the solution is automatically okay, uh, appear. Okay, then I put the formula, it will be general. 11 is here. 11 is actually represents your B1. So I click B1 minus, okay, I want to calculate for X1. So minus, okay, X2 is actually. Uh, coefficient okay, here minus this coefficient multiply x2. Okay, if you key in exactly this formula will be specific for this example. If you want to make it template, okay, plus x2 is actually okay, because here negative one, it bring to right, right hand side become positive x1. If you want to make it general, I click the coefficient for a uh, 1, 2, which is negative 1. Multiply here. And then 
see, you see, I, because it bring to right hand side, negative. So minus, minus. So it minus this coefficient. So negative, negative, positive, positive time. Okay. X2 when K0, which is 0. And then again, I minus coefficient uh, for A13. Multiply X3 at step 0. Okay. Then if you put 5, it will be specific for this example. You want to make it flexible, you divide by coefficient of A11. Uh, then this will be flexible. So mean next round you chain vector uh, metric A and B the formula still there. Formula is the general formula. Yeah. Okay. Then you key in the formula for X two. Uh. X two seventeen is actually cell B two. Click here B two. Then minus. Okay. Minus two X one. Okay. It's actually okay. Uh, we get minus two is actually minus coefficient of A two one. Time, time, uh, okay, x1, when you take k0, k0, so this is x1, take the latest value, x1 at step 1, okay, and then minus coefficient for a23 time, this one, and divide by coefficient of a22. Like this one, I'll show you how I put the formula general. A, okay, this one you put B2. Okay, here you minus, okay, this will be A21. Okay, A21, and then X1 at step number one. Okay, and then minus A23. X3 at step zero. Okay, this is actually click B1. So minus A12 x step 0, x2 step 0. This is minus a13, x3 at step 0. Okay, instead of, if I put here, this will be more general. Negative a12, a12, negative 1 times negative, so positive 1. So this is a general formula that I put in. So if I put minus a13, a13 is 1, uh, so that's why you have minus 1. I put negative a21. a21 is 2, so minus 2. Minus a23, minus and negative 1, that's why plus. So, okay, I key in the x, I put in the general formula. Okay, and then this is actually b3. b3, you put minus a31 times x1 at step number 1, minus a32, x2 at step 1. Like the general formula that I key in. Uh, where did I key in the uh, general formula? Uh, put in general formula from general equation. So that you, when you change your metric A and B, okay, the formula is still there, then the solution is automatically calculated. I mean, put in this general formula instead of the specific formula. Okay. So uh, now x3, okay, x3, so b3 here minus a31 multiply, uh, multiply a31 multiply x1 take the new one minus a32 multiply x2 take the new one. Okay, divide by coefficient of a33. Okay, this one divide by coefficient of this one I have to click first. Okay. This one you divide by divide by a22, divide by a11, divide by uh, a11. This is a33. a33. Okay. But here, okay. You copy it down. Uh, the formula, okay, because all here, A11, A22, A33 are actually constant value. All the coefficients here are actually constant. Okay, if you have to fix, okay, the okay, constant, you see, yeah, when I copy it down, it, 
Okay, when I copy it down, it runs. Eh? You see the first formula. Eh? Initially, it should be taking here. The first formula. B1, right? Okay, if next row, I will take... Uh, I still... Okay, mean all the B1, A1, 2, A1, 3, all are constant. If I don't constant it, okay, initially, I put the place is correct. This is... B1, you see, this is B1 here, B1. But when you copy it down, because of relative row, okay, all the 9, when you copy it down, it become 10. It become 10. And then this one, you see, uh, wrong. That's why in this case, okay, easy. Mm, you put constant. Put dollar front and back, or you can just put dollar at the back because you want to fix the row. But since this is constant value, we just put dollar front and back for all the coefficient a11 until a33. Then you add up dollar front and back for all the formula that you key in. Mean all the A11, all the entry in the metric A until your vector B. Constant it. Uh, okay. Uh, but X, okay, X don't constant. Okay, I put it first. This is a B. I think the B. Okay, you just con uh, all the just constant A11 until A and M, B1 until B3, but X, X2 node, X3 node, X1, uh, the new X1, the new X3 cannot constant. That one have to make it a relative it chain. Okay, so mean constant this one. Okay, we check the third formula. B3, B3 have to constant. A31 have to constant. X1, number one, which is a cell B5. Don't constant it. Okay. And then A32 is a cell D11, uh, D11 constant. But the new X2 don't constant. So, I mean, only the first term. Only the coefficient constant. Okay, sorry, a bit uh, late. Okay. Okay, I just want four decimal place. And then uh, I can calculate. So now you can copy down the formula. Hmm, got some, some which is not constant. Okay, check back the first one. formula b1 is here b1 is my e9 and then minus a to a12 a12 is c9 a12 c9 time my uh x1 not okay c c14 and then uh a13, A13 is D9 divided by B9, correct? Oh, this one. K, 
okay, uh, A22 have to constant it. C10, if you not constant, you see uh, it move, increase, become C11. Okay, so okay, what we said converge, you see the solution? Focus, zoom in, last is 2, 2, 3. So the solution is 2, 2, 3. Let me see. Yeah, 2, 2, 3. Okay, you may find the error, let's say error here. Error, let's say x1. Uh. Just put magnitude error x1. Then magnitude error x2. Okay, magnitude error x number 3. Okay, you take ABS, uh, absolute value of x1 at step number 1, deduct this one. And then you can copy the formula because you follow the pattern when you key in. Okay. You see when you key in here, B15 minus B14. When you copy the next column, we got C15 minus B will become C row number because you say you are in the same row, so row number maintained. Then, if you want to display only four decimal place, I decrease it. Okay, what we mean by okay. The stopping criteria here. Okay, maximum of okay, uh, absolute value of the vector k plus one minus vector k. Okay. Mean you have got three value, right? We take the bottom row deduct mean vector x1 minus x0. So you got three value, the maximum one must be less than epsilon. Okay, this one, the maximum one is here, still greater than epsilon. Okay, the maximum one, this is 0 0.114, still greater than epsilon. Okay, so you can uh, iterate one more time. This one still greater epsilon. Uh, actually, you can stop. If you stop at number five, also can. Okay, but you stop at number five, the answer is 2.0. Uh, this is, okay, if you want four decimal place, decrease, huh? Oh, yeah. If you stop at number 5, the answer is 2.002, 1.99993. Because it satisfied the convergent criteria, mean your absolute error, the maximum absolute error is 0 0.002. Because this is 3 decimal place. Huh? Increase some more. Uh, oh, if you use 4 decimal place, uh, not yet. Number five cannot. This one, this value 0 0.0017, still greater than epsilon. So we cannot stop at, okay, iteration five. Okay, we have to proceed until iteration six. K equal to six. Because here, the maximum value here is 0 0.002 less than epsilon 0 0.005. Then you can stop and the solution is vector x number three in here what the, what we okay when you stop you have to write down a conclusion because since uh, i mean the maximum value okay put it down here since the maximum value of uh, x number six minus x number 5. Okay, this is vector. The maximum value, you have 0 0.002 less than epsilon equal to 0 0.0005. Okay, then the solution is vector x number 6. Okay, vector. So which is 
two, two, three. The last one, vector number six, two, two, three. So the solution is two, two, three. Okay, you may check it using uh, inverse metric method.